In economics, we often develop and use economic models. The purpose of these economic models is to allow us to show how economic activity occurs. What we do is we take a lot of these laws that we have developed in economics, such as the law of supply and law of demand, and start building models off of those laws. And then we often base these models off of assumptions. One of the very common assumptions that we use in economics is we assume that people act rationally. Another assumption that we make is that businesses or firms are profit-minded entities. Well, both of those assumptions can often be flawed. Do all people act rationally all the time? No, not always. Do, does every firm want to maximize their profits? That's not always the case. Sometimes they might want to forego maximizing profits in one year so that way they can maximize their market shares or something of that nature. So we often base these models off of these assumptions that may or may not always hold true. And they don't always hold true because it's usually an expected pattern of, of human behavior. These models often show an expected pattern of human behavior because not, always, not all people act rationally. Those models may not always hold true. But these models, even though no model is actually going to predict the future, or be 100% correct, they are good for the reason that it allows us to approximate reality. In our world, it's so complicated, so many things are moving so often, there's so many things that affect another aspect that it's hard to keep track of it all and it's hard to predict the future. It's actually impossible to predict the future because there's so many moving parts that are coming in. But what these economic models do is they allow us to approximate reality, kind of more or less predict reality and it allows us to simplify it. Because if we look at, say, just the law of demand, and we say as prices increase, people buy less. Well, you can find uh, the fallacy in that time and time again. You can find a lot of different products or a lot of different times whenever as prices increase, the, good, the amount of the good is actually that's being purchased actually increases. The example I used before is if there is a shortage of gasoline or a shortage scare of gasoline, people are going to actually go out and buy more even though the prices are going up. So even though that these models do not always hold true 100% of the time, it allows us to simplify reality and allows us to give good approximations and interpret why things are happening the way they are. One of the economic models that we are going to use very heavily in this class is this perfectly competitive model. The perfectly competitive model is more or less the foundation of almost all economic models. That's where you start, and then you build out from there. The perfectly competitive model is one that states that there are many buyers and many sellers, and there is no government interference, as well as a couple of other assumptions that go into that model. But you're going to see that this perfectly competitive model is referenced time and time again throughout this class.